Hello, welcome to Fatigue Biter um, on what is the hottest day of the year. It is really hot today, it's like 30 degrees I think. Um, so I'm really conscious that I haven't done what I said I would do and so I wanted to post a video explaining that and explaining that I've been through quite a massive reality check over the summer holidays. It's been tough, it really has. So. Um, as you may have seen on previous videos, I mentioned I was going to do a six week vlog around how I co was coping with fatigue and the symptoms. Well, actually, in reality, over those six weeks, by the time I actually had quiet time away from my daughter, I was so exhausted I could barely lift the phone or articulate anything, string a sentence together. And that was the reality of my summer holidays. Um, don't get me wrong, we had fun. We did three camping trips. The first one, I wouldn't have been able to post anything anyway because I didn't take my phone. Um, left it at home, had a panic halfway down the motorway. No way were we going to turn around, so I had to just deal with that. And then the second camping trip was a bit longer and we went with cousins and had so much fun. There was a huge group of us, brilliant campsite, really, really nice, but didn't have any electricity, so phone kept running out of charge. And actually, I was finding that all I wanted to be was present. Having my phone and thinking about having to take photos and videos and everything all the time was really draining me, it was draining my energy, and I was so I was never in charge of photos. I was getting every collating what everyone else was was taking to be honest it, and that's just the way I have to prioritize I discovered that what I do do on a daily basis is prioritize the, even the smallest tasks of just taking my bag out and taking a photo or a video or whatever I, I'm like, oh, I just haven't got the energy or the brain power I'm focused on this situation. I'm struggling to multitask because of brain fog. So I just don't. I just, I, I found that I had to just stop multitasking completely. Don't even try and try to, which is so against my nature because I'm such a, one of these people that loves like just multitasks by nature. I'm just like, look, what we, this is get everything done, you know. Um, but I couldn't. Um, so instead of letting that frustrate me, I just stopped thinking about it. So it was only when I got to, I think, week five and I was thinking, oh, I said I was going to do a blog and I, or a vlog and I haven't and I feel really bad about that. But actually, it's not like I've got a million followers yet. And I needed to think about my well-being first and the welfare of my daughter in terms of, you know, hence finding some quality, having some quality time together. And it was, we had a great time, even though it rained most of the time, there was the odd nice day where we, we enjoyed ourselves in the sun. But other than that, we had to find alternatives. We had some play dates. I was muddling through working three days a week. You know, my husband working from home as well. So we tried play dates, going around grandparents' houses, all of that malarkey. But I did find, because we have limited support from grandparents, not that they, they, they would want to help more, um, but we're a bit of a distance away and there's other stuff going on. So I, yeah, so I was finding that by the time we got to bedtime, Ruby's bedtime, although more often than not it turned into my bedtime as well. I don't know if anyone else is like that, but I kept falling asleep with Ruby during the holidays. I was like, right, come on, let's you know, listen to one of the, right, Ruby, listen to one of your stories. Because she's got like a yoto, she's really good. But it's like, listen to one of your stories, and then as soon as it goes on, I'm just like, oh, that's it, I'm asleep. Um, there were nights where I think I, if I hadn't really forced myself, I would have been asleep before her. But anyway, no energy by by the evening. There was no way I was going to lift a phone or articulate or string a sentence together. I struggle with I was struggling with that enough now firstly but uh, yeah but for work on a daily basis I have to meet people regularly um throughout my working day and it drains me of my brain power because 
I have to really concentrate hard, especially if I'm having a bit of a flare up because words don't come naturally to my brain anymore. I'm sort of struggling to articulate what it is that's going on in my head because of the brain fog. So it is a lot of concentration, a lot of prep, a lot of work goes into it. So yeah, I'm talked out by the time I finish work. So that's, that's essentially where I was at in the summer holidays. Had a great time with my daughter. I was exhausted though and aching head to toe throughout it all. And I pushed through. I think every, there wasn't an evening where I didn't feel nauseous, dizzy, all of the symptoms of pure exhaustion. But then in the morning, I'd still be pretty achy. Mornings are my worst time and late at night, it seems at the moment, but usually it's the mornings at my worst time. But once I'm up and after an hour, I know that I can push through the rest of the day. But it is a push. And I think most people with fatigue experience that. You, you, you have to force yourself. I went round my parents the other day and they're getting a new kitchen fitted. And they needed help clearing out the kitchen cupboards. So I spent a couple of hours doing that. And I was aching before I started, to be honest. But once I'd finished, I'd, I just sat in the chair. I just said to mum, I, I can't. It's like my brain is saying, get up, but my body just won't do it. It's like the the signals my body is sending my brain is like, no, 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 you're not moving anywhere. So my brain, I, when I know fatigue, my fatigue's really bad. If my brain really can't overcome it, and you know, it might only last 10, 15 minutes, but it's like, no, you cannot move right now. You need to just gain some energy so yeah so that was essentially my summer holidays or our summer holidays was me having bursts of energy to try and spend time with my daughter and do things and then having to sit down and then bursts of energy and sit down and oh, let's do that trying to just conserve things trying to pace myself where I could and I did I did pace myself because I knew I had to know what was happening throughout the day so that I could knew where to put my breaks because if I didn't know where I was going to have a rest mentally that is just so draining it, it's, it's demoralized it's awful if you're thinking I've got this big day or this and I'm not going to get space for, for a rest so what I've learned to be able to just ensure that I get that rest and it was a lifesaver because I feel like I've been on the verge of a full-on flare-up for weeks and weeks now like I am overdue a week in bed I really am but it hasn't happened so that's really good that is really good um and I think I'm learning the signals and I have learned the signals and we'll talk about more that about that in, in another video so I, I do understand the signals but the problem is is that you need time and space to be able to understand what your body's doing my daughter at the moment today is at beaver camp so i've got a little bit of time to be able to sit and think what is my body telling me what have i learned over the last six weeks what worked what didn't work i'm able to think about mindfulness and think about how i'm going to incorporate wellness into my coming weeks because i've got a little bit of space and that's how i want to spend my spare time is it's all about well-being. It's all about making sure that I can maintain my mental health and my physical health as much as possible. Um, and to be honest, mental health is the biggest. Because if you're not feeling positive or you're... It, it takes a lot of mental power to get over a bout of fatigue. Because it's so easy to say, okay, my body's telling me to rest and to rest and most of the time you really should but a lot of the time sorry my phone's looks like it's about to die uh, most of the time you can't you've got i've got a child and work and you know so you have to just be able to push through um and mentally that is awful because you just think to yourself i really just want to rest um so maintaining your mental health and making sure that you know where you're going to have space to do that so I have kind of got that, I think. I've got, because I work part-time, so I've got the end of the week. But then I look at the house and think, oh my gosh, I've got so much to do. I've got to run around cleaning. And then to so the gym or a walk with the dog or 
a long shower and just some self-care goes fully out the window because you're like, no, nah, because I've got too much other stuff to do. But actually, I don't have the energy to do that other stuff if I don't rest. So it is, it's that never-ending balance that we've all got to learn. Anyone that's suffering with fatigue or chronic illness needs to understand how to pace and how to how their body reacts in certain situations and you can read the situation and understand where you're going to end up if you don't do this that and the other so that's a bit of a waffle but i am going to cover that in another video as promised um now that i've got my routine back um, as it were but yeah so summer holidays were amazing but i am glad that i put my phone to one side and was completely present for my daughter and it was a hard reality check for me because I'd over promised and had high expectations of myself, as I always do. And then get frustrated. It's frustrating because your body says, nope, you're not doing that. But actually, when I look back, I just think that was an added pressure and an added stress that I didn't need to give myself. So I've learned something, so, which is good. So I thought I'd share that. It wasn't complete waste um mm. so there'll be plenty of other opportunities to do things and i'm i've got lots of ideas um for future videos so it would really be really nice if you do come across this video and you think oh it seems quite interesting i just slapped myself on the leg for some reason anyway um yeah then please do post in the comments or um, share your ideas and thoughts or things that you've tried or things that have worked or haven't worked for your fatigue um, but also things that you'd like me to try. So something that I did start last week was um, fasting. Sorry, you can tell I've got brain fog at the moment. It's not really bad today, but the heat is making it worse. So I'm having to concentrate really hard on getting the words out. Um, so what was I saying? Fasting. So yeah, so um, I've done it before, have found it has helped with my energy levels in the mornings. But then it's very easy to fall off the wagon and to start eating breakfast again. Because, yeah, I think we are hardwired to want to eat in the morning, I think. So, um, but I did it last week. I did it for the three days that I was working and I found it actually, I don't know if it's a fluke, but my I felt clearer headed in the morning without eating, without having breakfast. So... I am going to do that and I'm going to obviously keep note of how I'm feeling about that and, and what impact that is having on things. I'm also bringing in more exercise. So it's going to be daily walks with the dog, you know, over 10,000 steps a day is my aim. Um, and if it means that I have to do less housework, I still need to try and prioritise walking and exercise because it's good for my health but really good for my mental health if it's just me and the dog or just me on my own doing whatever I need that space so yeah so there's some small changes happening now that we're getting the routine back um, and I'm going to be looking at other new things or new things to me that might help fatigue and I'm going to look at and research certain things. One thing my husband has signed up for is the Ironman in Sweden next year, which is really exciting. He's done an Ironman before, but he's the fittest he's ever been um, at quite a ripe old age. So, yeah, so he's thrown his hat into the ring and said, yeah, I'm going to do uh, another Ironman 10 years later. So... Um, he's very into nutrition and, and things at the moment so we're kind of coming up with a plan and it's about trying to find what works as a family as well so there's going to be a little bit about that and about how families can work together i suppose and, and try to find a happy medium because i'm finding that you know i've got to make ruby's food and there's rich and there's me and with fibro by the time i get to the evening food is not big on the agenda i'm hungry but i want something quick and easy and usually i'm full up on craving sugar because i'm low in energy so these are all the things that we're going to be looking at and identifying and trying to find some models that work for me essentially might work for other people might not but i'm going to feed back um, as i go 
and yes and generally I want to just keep a note and continue putting together videos about my journey with fatigue and hopefully gain a bit of a following so that there's that sense of being united and there being a sense of community and people that understand the challenges of a fibromyalgia but probably more generally fatigue because it does come with an awful lot of chronic illnesses out there so if you're one of those people that is trying to battle on or in one of the you know fatigue superheroes out there then do please comment and share how you're getting on and like and subscribe my videos as well so i'm aiming for at least one a week so please do keep an eye out for those but i just wanted to post an update um from my summer holidays i did slap my leg again there and i am going to do a little bit of a montage as well i do like a montage but again just trying to edit things like that it takes brain power so yeah i'm gonna get as i get better at it it's gonna get quicker so there's gonna be more and more videos um so yeah so do come on this journey with me like and subscribe i hope everyone is enjoying the weather um, and it's not you know making people flare up too much but please do get some positive lit positivity out of the sun some vitamin d before it disappears um, and i'm about to go out for a walk with my other half because uh, my daughter's at beaver camp did i mention that time away from from my child ah! um so i might if i can find the energy get a paddle my paddle board out which i've got which i bought for my 40th birthday potentially kind of been going into a midlife crisis there but we've only been able to take it out once this holiday because of the weather and flare-ups and just general chaos going on in my mind and in, in life so yeah i'm gonna go and see if we can do that and get a parking space because everyone's gonna be by the river anyway um and try and enjoy uh everything um time is precious and if you're in pain at the moment i'm sorry you know and tomorrow hopefully will be a better day but we're all in this together and i will see you all on my next video. Thanks. Bye.